Hey, this is Tim Bennett. I'm the Film Finance Channel. And you can uh, see more about my Film Finance Channel at my site at argonet.com. Tonight, I'm very excited about tonight. This is a, a night that I've been waiting for for a very long time. And I've got two awesome gentlemen with me. Some of you already know Tom Malloy from the first time that I spoke with Tom. And he shared some incredible secrets and nuggets about film finance and how he went about raising his $20 million. And uh, Tom is joining us again tonight. Um, but I've got a, a Jason Brubaker is with us as well. And Jason and I have been talking for a very long time about getting onto this channel together. And, you know, all the things in the universe have been conspiring to keep us apart until tonight and finally jason is with us tonight so tom malloy if you are here good evening tom and jason brubaker if you're here good evening jason yeah, i'm here and I'm, I'm happy to be here excellent yes, and I, i'm here yes, and I, i'm well. here as well still getting uh, some echo. Still getting yeah some it's echo. very strange we've got an echo from uh tom's line i think it is and um, I don't know what we can do about it. Is there anything you can do about it? You're in, Tom? Um, I can close out the computer part of this and just do the phone as well. All right, we'll try that and see what happens. Okay. So it shouldn't be coming to the phone. <laughs> shouldn't be, I, I know. But there you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the beauty of live. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great now. Oh. And, then, and of course, the echo is now gone, so it's it, perfect. It, it seems that way, so fantastic. So we've got about 76 people registered for tonight. There's actually 11 here with us right now. I uh, just want to check everyone can hear me and where you're all from. You just type into the chat box where you're from, and we'll get things going. Uh, let's see who we've got. We've got Ala, Andrea, Courtney, Dave, Jeff, John, two Johns, John, John, uh, Kay, Kenda, Lee, and Ty. So um, Dave is from Ireland, John, New York, Ty, Orlando, and another John from Davenport. So great, we're very international. So let's get going uh, with the uh, reason we're here. Tonight I'm being joined by two giants in the film industry, and especially film finance, and they've got together to produce a new program called the Film Finance Guide. And I want to be transparent right up front. Tonight, we're going to be talking about their new program. And at the end of the time together, we are actually going to share with you a link where you can go and buy that. Um, and in the meantime, you know, I'm sure they're going to share with us a lot of invaluable nuggets and tips, as always, about film finance. And if you have any questions that you'd like me to throw at either Tom or Jason, then please type them into the chat box. Keep them on topic. They are about film finance. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a great night. So welcome, one and all. Welcome, Tom. Welcome, Jason. It's good to have you here. Great to be here. Happy to be here. And there you go. I've put your, your shining pictures. Tom is on the left, and Jason is on the right there. <laughs> I think there was a name. I think it was you, you, you have a T at the end of my name. And I think, Jason, you have a G at the, instead of a B for group or instead of Brubaker. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're the doppelganger. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, okay. So maybe you can just introduce yourselves a little bit because I'm sure there's some people here who don't know you. Uh, you know, just talk about how long you've been into filmmaking and, and what qualifies you to be here tonight talking about the Film Finance Guide. So, uh, Tom, do you want to go first? Because you've been with us before. Um, uh, sure, sure, sure. Just um, a brief. I'm, uh, yeah, for sure. My name is Tom Malloy. I've been uh, professionally in the film business for uh, over 10 years, uh, you know, be, being that this is all I do. And uh, I produce, I started as an actor, kind of was one of the trendsetters as far as one of the first uh, triple hyphenate actor, writer, producers at least one of the first successful triple, you know, triple hyphenates. And uh, I've done eight films now. I've raised over $25 million in private equity uh, for films. And uh, I wrote the book Bankroll, 
that's considered to be the gold standard as far as um, film financing books go. It's in bookstores everywhere. It's actually second edition. came out last year, and that's me. Fantastic. Great. And uh, Jason? Uh, my name is Jason Brubaker with a B. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm based here in Los Angeles. I've been in the movie industry for about 10 years. And uh, in addition to making my own movies, I run the popular website filmmakingstuff.com where I share all the, all the different um, tips from the trenches that I've learned along the way. And day to day, um, I, I'm heavily involved in the emerging trends in video on demand distribution and I currently serve as the manager of film acquisitions at a company called Chill and you can check that out at chill.com it's a uh, it's a video on demand transactional platform that's highly social media driven um, funded in part by William Morris Endeavor you still there Jason yeah, I'm still here. Can you okay. hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, great. Okay, that's that's fantastic. And I've actually been a member of your newsletter from your website for, for some time. And uh, I get emails from you regularly. And you have some great <laughs> information there. Oh, thank you. So how did you two get together? Um, I think it was eHarmony. We uh, met on it. No, I'm just kidding. We, uh, we met, I think, Jason, I don't even know how we met. Did you, you, you reach out to me for an interview or something or how did we meet well I was thinking about this the other day and you and I have not met face to face and yet we've known <laughs> each other for about three years <laughs> yeah, so, but it's true we tried though we tried the last time uh, you know we tried to, I was in LA for a little bit and then back to New York and we tried to meet uh, yeah you're right yeah. Um, I think initially a, a few years back we did the uh, we did a free ebook uh, called the modern movie making movement and uh, Tom, it was Carol Dean that made the introduction to you uh, for me. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And that was an ebook that was great. And uh, Jason put it together with, you know, I, I don't know how many different filmmakers and experts that you have together all giving, you know, pieces uh, to, to kind of cobble together this, this great book on, um, on filmmaking. Yeah, I think it was about 12 of us, but, um, you know, I, I was always impressed with Tom and his knowledge, and I'm certainly familiar with his work, and I thought, you know what, may, I have a, a lot of people um, in my world that, that could probably benefit from Tom's experience, and uh, they're sick of hearing, for, you know, from me, um, you know, so it's always nice to get a fresh voice and, and also challenge my own beliefs. And, and when did you first get together to decide to do this new program? Say a, a few months back, I don't know the exact date, but um, Tom and I had, had shot some emails back and forth, um, and, and Tim, very similar to how you and I have shot emails back and forth, and, and how yeah. these things happen is I work these crazy 12 to 14 hour days, so trying to fit things into my schedule um, beyond my day to day, you know, is always a challenge, um, but I'm, I'm grateful that Tom and I, you know, we were able to get on the phone and, and hash out some ideas. And I think we'll dig into this a little bit further, but, you know, there's this weird perception out there that, it, so I'll take a step back, and, and there's two schools of thought when it comes to film finance, and especially from the educational perspective, which is where Tom and I are, are speaking from, where it's like, okay, how do we share knowledge with the independent film community, but how do we make it actionable knowledge? There's a lot of quote-unquote gurus out there that are telling people that the only way to raise money is through foreign pre-sales and all sorts of crazy, um, complicated deal uh, deals. And it, it's kind of given a lot of independent filmmakers the mindset that unless you fly to Cannes and try to score some sort of strange pre-sale deal on your movie – that you're in fact not as much of a filmmaker as the guy who knows mm -hmm. the millionaire down the street um, who writes you a check. And I think that's really odd. And frankly, I think sometimes people get caught up in that mindset um, because they're afraid to go after, you know, it's much easier to say like, oh, I can't afford my, my trip to Cannes this year, so I guess I can't make my movie versus, hey, I, I, you know, I, I can't pick up the phone to call the guy down the street and talk to him. And, and that, that was sort of the impetus for me uh, and, and for Tom and myself to get together and say, you know what, let's try to change some of this stuff and, and let people know that you can 
you are very much a professional filmmaker if you're raising, you know, money, regardless of where the money comes from. That's interesting. And, and what I like about your comment was that you're putting together something that is actionable as well. So is this like a hands-on yeah. workshop or something? Well, yeah, yeah, it was basically, I had been hired uh, to consult on some films. And I still do that. You know, people bring me in on films to kind of put them together. And I found a, and I think this is when our, the conversation with Jason started and we talked about what we could put together. He had wanted, you know, actionable items and all. And I found that for every film I was doing similar things, you know, and there was these elements that, you know, we talk about in the film finance guide that these steps that you needed to take, and it was the same steps for every single film. Um, and that so many people, even on the professional level, I mean, literally just jumped onto a, a consulting job on a film recently, and there had been legitimate people, and there were still, you know, rookie mistakes in the business plans and things that were like, how did you not see this, you know? But so it was, there were these elements from so that anybody can do it, and that's what we wanted to put in the guide: that here's steps that you can take um, to to prep your project and and bring it to a level that when you get in front of that person that's, you know, worth $100 million, um, which we touch on how to find those people. But when you're in front of those, that, that person, you're, you're going to get the sale. And that's interesting. And, and I feel that I uh, have the same experience. When I started putting my movies together here, and I know we mentioned this before, Tom, was that I watched so many directors and, and producers really struggling to create finance for their movies and this is what actually got me into this whole process of putting these uh, interviews together I thought that there has to be a better way than the way that I see so many people doing it and I've got a slide up which right now it says I think film finance for movies could be one of the most misunderstood processes in creating movies why do you think so many people go about it the wrong way why is this issue happening in the first place um, well, I could take that one, Jason, um, if, sure. if, and then you, you can add to it at the end if you want. But uh, it's, it's it's almost like it's two different uh, schools of thought. You have the business aspect of film, and then you have the art aspect of film. But even the people that know the business aspect of you know nuts and bolts producing may not know raising money because that uh, you know they, people have asked me at seminars, what's what should I do to kind of make myself better at raising money? And if if I I always say that. If you had to read 100 books on sales or 100 books on producing, what would make you a better producer? <laughs> I said 100 books on sales without question, especially on the film finance end. So it's like you need to be an expert at selling, at the business, at the marketing, all those 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 components that may not necessarily be the same, or definitely is not necessarily the same thing as the nuts and bolts producing of hiring crew and casting and things like that. You see what I'm saying? So there's two different kind of uh, schools of thought and, and just they're, it, it's, it's tough for somebody to be able to straddle both. Yeah. Jason, any comments I, on that? Yeah. I, th I think what oftentimes happens is, you know, I get a lot of comments from people that say things like, well, I just, I just want to, I, I have this great idea for a movie. I just want to give you the idea. I don't, I don't really want to do anything except give you the idea and then you produce it. And yeah. I, I think there's a certain sense of like, wait a second. Um, you know, I have my own projects, and then Tom has his own projects. So outside of consulting, you know, the the real focus for everybody is to become an entrepreneurial filmmaker. And I think that's something that you know separates um, people that don't get movies made versus the folks that do. And and it's it's interesting that you say entrepreneurial filmmaker because I've had many discussions in these interviews where we say that. The entrepreneurs and filmmakers are actually very, very similar in processes. And one of the mistakes that entrepreneurs make is that they try to do everything themselves and, and do a micromanagement and, and cover everything. And one of the mistakes I think I see a lot of independent movie makers making as well is exactly the same mistake. They try to do everything themselves. Yeah, I, th I think that the, um, learning how to delegate is is, you know, I mean, there's two schools of thought. Like, once you get into the actual production, I, you know, it's it's time for delegation. But to get the ball rolling, you're a guy, you have a screenplay, you break down the screenplay in a, in a schedule and a budget, and then you create a business plan out of that. 
you know, at that point, um, especially if you wrote the movie yourself, there's going to be very few people that are signed on and have as much passion as you do to get that rolling. So it's usually the stage when, when somebody's like, you know, I have an idea for a script. I've written a screenplay. It's going to be great. Um, I, I get emails a lot that, that when people are like, it's going to be great. Uh, everybody <laughs> in the world wants to see this movie. It's never been done before. And at that point, I, I think like, oh, man, it's never been done before. So that's an unproven concept. Um, and that's, <laughs> you know, at times scary because I don't quite understand what the guy's getting at, you know? Yeah. And if he wants me to, like, go out and, and try to help him put the package together with actors and financing and all that kind of stuff, it's it's more difficult for me because it's not my baby, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah actually, you know, it, 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 go about, ahead, Tim. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I just find it quite amusing. I, I also get the emails as well. Like people saying, I'm the writer, I'm the director, I'm the producer, I'm the main actor. Can you send me $10 million, please? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's totally true. And, and uh, I just had a conversation with uh, a person last night, a producer friend, and it was like, they're, people just, they, I guess, I don't know. It's something about the film business because there is an aspect of it that's fun and, uh, you know, the red carpets and things that, we, you know, that we've done. And, and I think that people look at it as that it's not work and it's not a business, you know. So, hey, here, you know, I have this great idea for a movie. Can you make my movie for me? And, uh, they, you know, I, I always joke that when I was invited to speak in Dubai and the Dubai Film Festival, and uh, it was 2008, right before the banking crisis and right before Dubai kind of went under. And not that it's under, but, you know, it's definitely not this, this insane, yeah. you know, garden of money that it was but there were people there at the festival that it was like uh they just had a screenplay or you know or a concept for a screenplay and they thought you know some rich arab guy was going to be like here you take check and you go make movie and come back a couple of years you know like i, I guess they really just thought <laughs> that you know millions were going to come their way and and that's the joke was that was in dubai that that even happened here you know people uh i was at a bar last night and i was talking to somebody about filmmaking and uh and the person's like, I got a great idea. You want to, you know, want to run with that? <laughs> I said, well, no. I said, I have my own ideas. Kind of, I'm working in, in development in my own projects. And I guess you just don't get that it, it is a business. And you have to help yourself first, you know, and not just expect that everybody's going to jump on. Now, once you can get to a point where you're giving value and there's, there's an aspect of the, you know, a film that will appeal to, to other people, you know, meaning a great attachment, a distribution deal, you know, an actor that's involved, then now you're going to see people want to jump on left and right. But until then, you have to be your own kind of champion. All right. Well, let, let's move on a bit. I think there's great comments. Um, how early on should someone be looking at getting finance and searching for financial help when making a movie? At what stage should they really start that? I'm going to jump in here real quick, and, uh, and then I'll say a few quick things. And then, Tom, I think it's, it's time to rock and roll. Yeah. Um, okay. My, my thinking with this is um, it, it should start every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. You should be building a network of, of people that are that are more successful than you, and uh, because they're more successful than you, odds are good that a few of them are what we call in the U.S. accredited investors, people that um, – I don't know what the rule is on it right now, Tom. Is it still – what's the definition of accredited investor these days? It's funny, I was talking to somebody about this just recently, too. It's changed. There was a point where you had to have $200,000 salary and a million dollars kind of net worth, um, you know, meaning all your assets with your house. But I think that there's something – I think that you – some new law, you can't, you can't count your house as part of your net worth now. So that changed and that, that cut a lot of people out of the equation. That's interesting. And, and then, you know, but, but my quick comment here is um, you should constantly be going out and expanding your network to, to, you know, enrich your life with, frankly, rich and successful people. Good point indeed. And uh, well, well taken. So let, let's move on to start talking about the training program that you've got because uh, we've been about 20 minutes so far. What really inspired you guys to put this together? Well, as I said, you know, there was things that I saw that, that could be applied to every film. And that was, you know, if I'm going to be specific about something, you know, if, I, if I'm consulting on a film, it's, there's 
there's specific things that can may only apply to this film or that film. That wouldn't help the kind of general filmmaking public. So what I wanted to do, and like I said, is, is I identified these things that were common in every film that every single person seemed to need help on. And so that's what was the inspiration is that Jason and I put this together that, you know, the filmmakers, that pretty much any filmmaker can benefit from it, even if they've got, you know, uh, 60% because they've they've done films before and they and they know they're still going to get forty percent out of it. What I'm saying is that it's something that everybody will find gems in it. So that we want to make something that applies to um, you know anybody that wants to make a movie. All right, great. I, I wanted to to touch base. Yeah, I, yeah, go I ahead, wanted Jason. to touch base with Tom with this too, just to eliminate a lot of the BS that was out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for Jason is a big proponent of that. You know, like he he mentioned before in pre sales, which was was a thing, but like a thing like, you know, maybe 15, 20 years ago. And, and you know, the DVD market, you know, of foreign sales, which was a thing, but that was a thing like maybe six, seven years ago. So, you know, to kind of put the right information out there. All right, fantastic. And just to bring everyone up to date, because we've had a few more people join us uh, since we started. We're talking to Tom Malloy and Jason Brubaker about their new program, the Film Finance Guide. And uh, let's assume that we are part of the Film Finance Guide. What, what can we expect when we go through the training? Can you walk us through some of the highlights and tell us what's in it? You want to take yeah, that, Jason? Yeah. Um, one, of, one of the great things about Tom is he's, he's very good at distilling information into actionable items. Um, so in the Film Finance Guide, it was very important to break it into a step-by-step -step system um, that whether or not you're a seasoned pro or a beginner, you have a system that helps you get from, you know, start to finish. And Tom um, has these five steps that are just amazing in terms of how you can go out, um, find high net worth individuals, um, and, and get into the process of going from, um, you know, somebody that's just, calling cold to creating a warm, profitable um, and relationship with the investor. And I found, you know, one of the things that we put in that I thought would, would I had to ask myself, um, and, and by the way, if I'm, I'm struggling for words because it's, it's only 7.24 a.m. and I've been up since 5, um, and I went to bed at like 1, 1 a.m. <laughs> so um, if, if anything doesn't make sense, just just tell me to stop and I'll, and I'll explain it. But one gotcha. of the things that I wanted in the system was all the stuff that I wanted to, that I needed to know 10 years ago. Um, and I used that as a guiding point. So Tom and I got on the phone and we actually in the system um, as one of the bonuses is we do an investor cold call role play. So imagine, you know, you're somebody that has this great idea for a movie and you know that you need to go out there and find prospective investors, but you're like, how the heck do I do that? Um, we have an audio that's about 30 minutes long where, where I play the investor and Tom plays the filmmaker and he calls me up on the phone and I kind of give him a hard time. And through that role play, you get to find out exactly what those conversations sound like. Um, yeah. I never knew that early on. So for me, that was invaluable. And, and I think that folks that, that really, you know, not just get the system but, but follow it are going to get uh, tremendous results. The yeah, and to add to that, I think that what was cool is that we went back and forth, and I remember the emails flying back and forth, Jason, that we started truly asking ourselves, like, what do filmmakers need? Like, it, and it was like we're, we were kind of brainstorming suggestions, and then that's when he came up with the, the investor, you know, call and getting the audio on that. But then we had a, a checklist of, of things you need to prep, and then we had a um, – kind of a cold call script that we put together. So there's all these things truly that we weren't like, you know, how can we, uh, you know, we could have easily said, let's sell this as a completely different product. But we were like, how can we add to this? Like, what, what, do, what do filmmakers need? What do they want? And then what's going to help them? Yeah, absolutely. We, we just jam-packed it with as much useful information as we could without talking about all the, all the silly buzzwords that aren't going to help anybody. Yeah. And I really like the idea of that, of, of that conversation. And I think that's probably something that people should do at home before they go for their meetings as well. That, that makes perfect sense to me. So that, that sounds like a great bonus. 
Um, if anyone's got any questions that they'd like to ask Tom or Jason, you know, feel free to type them into the chat box and we can maybe open a few lines. Um, I've got a question just come in now from Alex. Um, if Alex, do you have a microphone, Alex? And we can uh, actually open your line for you. He's got a, I oh know he says, no, sorry. Okay, so I'll ask it for him. He says, having gone through virtually every funding strategy out there, every th everything from scams to the legit, what seems, what sets your program apart from all the rest in respect to actionable strategies and tangible results? Uh, which way do you want me to take that or do you want to take that, Jason? Um, uh, go ahead, Tom, and, and I, I can chime in as well. Okay, well, a couple things. One is that you're, you're talking about two people that are actually doing it. You know, it's, uh, it, Jason made the point early on that you have a lot of people out there that, that are, uh, you know, talking about things that don't exist in the film world anymore. And I always say look at their bios. You know, if you're going to write a, read a book or buy some type of program, Look at the bios. What have they done? What it, you know, and and it, the writing is on the table there. If I if I if I raised over twenty five million in private equity, I think I'm a pretty good guy to talk to about you know make uh, raising money. If I was writing a book on you know uh, studio blockbusters and how to make studio blockbusters profitable, I probably wouldn't be the guy to to, to be listening to you know. And and I think the the second part of that is there's a money back guarantee for 60 days. And that was something that, that Jason was adamant about putting that on so that people can, you know, say, check it out, listen to it and, and say, it's not, it's not for me, you know, and, and we're not charging $500 for this. I, I think the, the final price was $97, you know, so it's less than a hundred dollars. And, you know, I always laugh and, and think about if you were hiring an entertainment attorney, you know, the minimum rate you're going to pay, for a legit entertainment attorney, it's probably three, four hundred dollars an hour easily, you know. And uh, so here's something that, that that's not going to put you out. There's a money back guarantee. I can't. Say, to me, there's no negatives. But, uh, you know, I don't know what you want to add to that, Jason. Well, you know, part of why I wanted to get together with you, Tom, is for that reason. I mean, you know, and we know who they are. There's a, there's a lot of these people out there that are just filling the world with all sorts of outdated information, and it just it aggravates me. Um, and I'm on a few of these email lists, and the stuff that they're talking about is just, it's hype. Um, so, you know, you mentioned in the comment that you're looking for tangible, you know, I, I don't know, you might get this and find, um, hey, you know, it, it's not for me. Well, in that case, it's, it's really not for you. Get the refund. Um, but, frankly, all the people that have bought it so far, with the exception of one or two people, um, you know, have written glowing reviews and, and said that this is exactly what they were looking for. Um, so that makes me feel good. And by the way, the people that have asked for refunds, um, in, in both instances uh, thus far, um, they were talking about how we never cover foreign pre-sales. And that's, <laughs> that's by design. <laughs> yes, that's so funny. That would be, I was just going to add that. It's true, Jason. And then that one of the two also mentioned something about that well, we missed the boat and we didn't say prep a, a trailer, which you know it's it's so funny. I, I didn't get a chance to write this guy back about prepping a trailer for a film, but it's like I, I actually am against that. And in most instances, I'm not I'm not 100 percent against it, but in many instances, I've seen it blow up in the person's face, and I've seen the investor actually be interested in investing the film, and then the person pulls out this low budget, you know, poorly produced visual trailer and, <laughs> and they end up losing the sale because of it, you know, and, and maybe who knows, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's keeping those people from making the movies. But sure. again, yeah, they mentioned things that were, uh, that, that were the things that we stayed away from in, in purposely in the, in the film finance guys. And I, and I've been given some thought as well, Tom, I think sometimes you talk about people talk about pre-sales and all this other crazy stuff just to make mm -hmm. it seem like it's more overcomplicated than it is. Yeah, you're right. Oh no, it's an, then it's an easy excuse to say, well, I can't do that because you know you'd, you'd have to be an expert on dealing with the French and you know and this and that. So yeah, you're right. You're right. It's an easy way out. And then Alec, uh, sorry, Dave has a question. He says, is the program mostly for use in the U.S. or will those of us in Europe be able to use it effectively as well? 
Well, I think that, it, you know, no matter where, I, I definitely think that people can use it in most countries. I would just say, I would say most countries, meaning, you know, it's, probably not going to do, you know, in, it, it, it may not do the same in, in something like China or some, something like that where there's certain, you know, it's a communist country and there's certain standards about, you know, investing. But I would say any democratic country, you know, that, that has, that you can do private equity investments, I think it's the same in closing an investor in, in, in a business type of scenario. You know, if you're making a film in India or you're making a film in the UK, at the end of the day, you're, you no matter where you're making the film, you want it to play for a global market. You know, you want to make it so that it's, it's, it's going to play for everybody. And that's going to be the best way to make money on the film and, and make yourself a better filmmaker and make yourself kind of a, a bigger filmmaker out there. That's going to make more films. So it, it, all of it speaks to that. It speaks to, you know, closing an investor and prepping your project in the right way. Um, which again, that's a global kind of thing. All right, and I've got a slide up right now. Uh, Tom mentioned the price earlier. He, he said it was $97, and it is $97. And the link that you can go to to get the program is argonet.com forward slash film finance guide, and that will take you to the, the sales page. Um, once people sign up, guys, how is it served to, to us? How do we get the material and everything? Is it done weekly or? No, it's, it's actually you're going to get everything – um, within minutes, it's an instant download, and that's by design. We just, uh, you know, we're trying to remove any of the tomfoolery or, or craziness that's out there. It's it's just a, a, you know, you follow the link, you, you get the stuff, you download it, and take some time to really go through it because, you know, th there's hours of material here, um, and a lot of it is audio, and that's by design. We want this to be something that okay, you're in between your film projects, you're probably working a job that you either like or maybe you don't like it, so we want something that you can listen to in your car um, or anywhere, you know, that, that you can, uh, you know, plug in um, audio. All right, great, and I've just uh, sent everybody um, in the chat box a link to the page as well. Uh, I had someone saying they can't see the slide because uh, they're not on screen. It's www dot argonet.com that's a r g o n e w -T, t e argonet.com forward slash film finance guide it's also in the chat box so the program is mainly audio and uh, is there only like workbooks or or stuff like yeah, that as well yeah it's both audio and workbooks um yeah, I'm, I'm an audio guy i like to listen to things but we know that there's a lot of folks that want to read yeah. Um, so when you get the guide, uh, you'll be able to read, you know, through a large portion of it, and then you'll also have the audio to complement the guide, as well as the bonuses that we mentioned earlier. And Tom was uh, nice enough to throw in as an additional bonus yet some more audio, um, which are his special tips. Yeah. In fact, I, I seem to remember there, there were three awesome bonuses. Yeah, the special tips was through a um, a CD set that, that that alone I would I would uh, I used to offer it. Uh, it was almost two hundred dollars, I believe. I actually it's been a long time because I wasn't out you know putting through CDs. But um, the special tips, which was a six CD, that was really great. It was like a really because it was just random, you know, kind of going, okay, things that I knew about closing investors, and in no particular order here they were, so that was always my favorite CD on there, because I thought you could get so much information from, from that. All right, great. And then what kind of uh, support is there? Like, if, if people want to get in touch with you during the program, is there any way to do that, or what happens there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, and I'm sure Tom's fine with this as well, but you're welcome to email us with any questions that you have. Um, Tom and myself offer consulting. Um, my wheelhouse, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, talking about film finance these days is just to throw um, anybody that comes to me over to Tom and say, talk to this guy because he's actually done it. Great. I'm just looking at the sales page right now. Um, yet yeah, there are three three bonuses: the investor prep checklist, then there's the special tips audio, and then the investor cold call script that you're talking about as well. So it sounds like a really great deal for a hundred dollars. And I think 
97 dollars a small amount to pay to uh, get your film financing correct and and you know done properly yeah i i think about it and i know there's people calling from all over the world but but these days 97 dollars over here i mean i went out last saturday night and had a few beers with my girlfriend um and it was roughly 97 dollars now admittedly <laughs> we got some food and some appetizers but you know it's a night out on the town versus you know doing something that could potentially get you to your goal and what's the value yeah. in that absolutely same thing exactly you know if i if years ago, if I hadn't gone through the crazy paths that I got to, to, to be successful and, and could have found something, I would have paid. I would have paid a lot more than hundred bucks. I would have paid, you know, the fifty thousand dollars if I could to just be able to get the information quickly so that I know how to make my movie. Uh, it would have saved me a lot of uh, internal aging. Let's say that. <laughs> well, well, the thing that I get so excited about, Tom, is you know, let's look at that. Ten years ago, I remember having the exact same thought: like, how do I raise money for movies? And at the time. You know, the only advice out there was to go find a doctor or a dentist and ask them for money. And uh, talk about <laughs> outdated advice. Or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and I was like, I don't want to see my dentist. I don't, I don't like my dentist. I mean, I like him okay. I just hate going to the dentist. Oh, yeah. My joke about that was, and it was like, it was literally those were the two things, the dentist and the other way was saying, get a negative pickup deal from Sony, and I used to joke in my seminars, like, was there like an 800 number that you could call and say, hey, I got a, I got a film, can you pick up my negative? Like, there was a, a negative pick up the 800 number I, uh, that never got put into play or something. <laughs> right, you, and, and, and I know you've, you've spoken a lot of panels, and I have as well, and there's always the one guy on the panel that's still talking, like it's ni 1995, and you're like, where did this guy come from? <laughs> yeah, oh my God, totally, totally. Like I said, I just saw it in a business plan where they were talking about the DVD markets and how this, you know, the DVD sales are going to do that, and I'm like, okay, whoever put this in there, this is from like 2000, <laughs> so this is now 2013, and people don't buy DVDs anymore, you know, but uh, it's, there's all that information. There's bad information out there everywhere. And, and is this a program that an absolute beginner can start with? Because, you know, this time last year, I was just getting ready to start my first movie. And uh, it's something that I've wanted to do all my life and finally got the opportunity to do it. But I really had no idea what I was doing. And I was relying on the people around me to guide me. And, you know, we made lots of mistakes. Oh, well, I know I did anyway. Is this something as a beginner that I can pick up and use? Is it something that someone who's seasoned can use as well? Uh, yes, but and, and that's by design. You know, as I mentioned earlier, if you are somebody that's been working in the studio system for years and years and years, and this is your first independent feature, and you're wondering how these independent guys raise money, that's in the system. Um, Brilliant. And for the beginners, you know, absolutely. This is the you know, this is easy, no fluff kind of information that, that, you know, Tom is so such a great teacher, you know, he was able to distill it down into small bites. Um, so you don't have to, you know, feel overwhelmed or anything like that. Uh, my suggestion is to take the program, go through it once completely, and then take it into smaller chunks and go through each part again and study it. And then, uh, you know, as I, I'll repeat it, but Tom and I are both available, you know, if you want to shoot us an email with questions, um, and we can go from there. Great. So there, there are basically five different parts to the program. Is that correct? Uh, correct. All right. Great. And uh, what are those parts basically, Tom? Well, there are the five different steps to 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 uh, you know prepping the project and getting the project ready, which, like I said, is 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 the most important aspect. You know, people say all the time, oh, well, where do I get investors? Like, like if they get in front of those investors, they'll just get the money from that person, you know? And it's not about that. It's about the natural prep. And if you do that in the right way, then you'll start attracting investors. And then you'll, you, you know, we go into tips on how to find people, but the bottom line is you've got to have the project ready first. And so there's five steps that are put into the, the, to the, um, you know, as, as far as the five components that you need to be ready for, um, you know, to, to make the movie uh, start to move forward. Great. Sounds awesome. I, I think I'm going to jump over and get my copy. Um, and be, be, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm getting, I'm, I've got a couple of scripts we're looking at right now, and uh, I need new investors. 
and and last time I actually invested some of the movie. Uh, I sold one of my condominiums uh, to actually raise okay. half the money for the movie, and you know I've only got so many properties, and I don't want to keep on doing that. So don't 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 do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, 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 don't do that anymore. Yeah, so this you is you got to use OPM, other people's money. Yeah, de definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, awesome. You know, any final questions from anyone before we uh, depart? Uh, Tai Hunt says, is there an example you can give in a small nugget of what we can expect in this guide? Any examples? Oh, an example. Okay. So I'm trying to think what's kind of a, the, the, the thing that threw me off was small nugget. That just, <laughs> I'm not known for my small nuggets. <laughs> for uh, my, uh, give us a big nugget then. <laughs> Long, long, long nuggets that never end. Um, uh, Jason, do you, you have any suggestions for what what uh, I could say in a bit, kind of small yeah, absolutely. way? Or, um, yeah. So, you know, a small nugget, and, and again, you know, Tom here has raised millions of dollars, and, and so it's just, it's so great to talk to him, but um, when him and I were talking, I was like, Tom, we're just going to do a half an hour audio, and then it turned out... <laughs> I, I don't know the exact actual runtime, but I'm pretty sure it's over an hour. It just we've just kept going with different um, information. So it's, Tom can't break things into small nuggets. Uh, here's <laughs> what I wanted to achieve in in working with Tom to to uh, create this program. I wanted it to be simple. I wanted it to be something that no matter you don't have to live in Hollywood. I wanted it to be that no matter where you're at, as long as you live in a society where it makes sense to go out and find prospective investors. I wanted to give you a roadmap so that you could not only go out and find them, but you would know how to prep for that and you would know what to say when you get there. Um, in my case, I, I knew a guy back in, uh, in Pennsylvania who owned a car dealership. And, you know, you may not think much of that, but it turns out the guy was worth $60 million. In any, whoever's, wherever you're listening to this from, you know, you have somebody in your hometown that everybody knows is a little bit more affluent than the other guy. And you may have had the thought, how do I approach this guy? How do I call him on the phone? And if so, what do I say when I get him? Or what happens if the secretary answers the phone? Um, or these days we call him assistants. What happens if the assistant answers the phone? How do I get a hold of this guy? And um, you know, and then how do I persevere so that I can finally get in front of this guy? And then when I'm in front of him, what do I say? Um, that's what Tom and I broke this thing into. We, we just, we, exactly that problem, um, and this provides a solution. That's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Um, I know the secretaries or the assistants can be a, a devil to get past sometimes, so that's going to be great. Um, Jeff Mosley, is that... One well, other comment on, just uh, real quick, um, you know, if you... The, the one thing that, that took me a long time to learn that I, I just want to give you right now while, while we're all listening to this that'll, that'll help you. These people, um, high net worth individuals, aka also known as your prospective investors, these people are used to getting phone calls from entrepreneurs all the time. They get these types of calls all the time from people you know, trying to sell different investments to them. So, the idea of you calling them up, although it's it's might be very new to you, these guys are so used to getting those kinds of calls that you don't have anything to fear. You know, you might have some difficulty getting them on the phone. You might have some difficulty um, for them taking meetings with you. But the important thing to re remember is, in any kind of environment where you're trying to present value to somebody and hoping that they're going to buy, which is essentially what you're doing with your movie, it can sometimes take, on average, seven contacts to get a meeting so just keep that in mind use that as a goal that's a great tip uh, to keep on trying as well um, Jeff has a, a question is the film finance guide for traditional movie investors only or does it also cover crowdfunding good question so for this one here we did not cover crowdfunding um, my former employer uh, happened to be Indiegogo by the way so I know an awful lot about crowdfunding but I wanted to I wanted to just, you know, in talking to Tom, I just wanted to provide you something for traditional investors. Um, this kind of material here 
is not going to change with time if you're ever going after traditional film finance with prospective film investors. Crowdfunding changes just about every week, um, and that's probably something that Tom and I can talk about it as a future project. Yeah. You know, and crowdfunding has changed. There was, you know, there was a time when, you know, the, the people go, yeah, they're, oh, I'm going to go to Indiegogo, and they still do, and, and you know, I'm raising 5000 and And that's not what we're talking about for this kind of film, you know, and, and then, no, well, then you'll say, well, Zach Braff, did, did, you know, got $2 million. Well, okay, but that's Zach Braff, and that's, you know, an established brand, you know, like the Veronica Mars, that, 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 those are the people that are getting the big hits. So the people that think they're going to go on just, you know, John Stuart Smith that's just going to go on and raise $2 million is most likely not going to happen with, with crowdfunding. But the other thing I just want to say is that what we're talking about here is a film as an investment. And when you talk about crowdfunding, you're not talking about film as an investment. You're talking about film as donations um, that you'd never have to pay back investors at all. So these are, this is when you're dealing with high net worth individuals that are business people that are going to so much more want to, you know, have it as this investment where they could potentially make profit in back end uh, versus donating, you know, X amount of dollars, uh, you know, a $20 hit or something like that. Very good comment. Uh, thanks. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, we're just talking right now to Tom Malloy, and Jason Brubaker about their new program, the Phil Finance Guide. And it's $97. You can get it at argonet.com forward slash film finance guide. And uh, before we depart, guys, uh, thank you very much for being here tonight and, and sharing your time with us. I know, Jason, it's like the crack of dawn for you. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, last comments. Tom, why should they buy the Film Finance Guide? I think that it has so much information in that that can be taught in a quickly, like, like we said, a quick actionable step. So there's information and then there's steps to take action. So here's what you got to do. Here's what you got to go do now. Go do this type of thing. So it's simple. It's easy to follow. There's all the bonuses that are attached. And on top of all of that, it's only $97 and there's a 60 day money back guarantee. That's what, those are the things that I think wrap it up all, you know, and say, okay, so it, it's worth it to just check it out, follow it. And at the end of the day, if you spend $97 and then you end up raising half a million dollars for the film, um, at least, you know, throw us a special thanks or something like that. At the end, cause I, I think that's <laughs> right. you've gotten, you've gotten the dinner. deal of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> and Jason, any comments on that? Why should, why should we buy the film finance guide? <laughs> well, again, you know, I've mentioned a lot of why I'm so enthusiastic about it, but but in short, this is all the information that I wish I had a decade ago when I was just starting out. Um, and, and frankly, this is all the information that those people, when they go to those panels and listen to the guy that's talking about foreign pre-sales, should have as opposed to that stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. And, you know, I think for $97, it's worth just having your email addresses and being able to ask you for help as well, no? Uh, that's right. Um, and, and I didn't, I, I'm not touting this so much, but I, but I did, um, I don't even know if Tom knows this, but I did throw an extra folder into um, the downloads, so there are uh, some secret bonuses that come with this. Um, Great. And I'll just, I'll just leave that, I'll, I'll keep that mysterious. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure everybody will be happy about those other bonuses as well. Brilliant. Well, thank you both very much for being here. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to you finally, Jason. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you'll come back and join us again uh, sometime. Yeah, both I, of I'd you. love to talk to you about uh, video on demand distribution on, on another call. But for right sure. now, everybody, film finance is the starting point. Great. And I, I think, you know, if you're serious about making a movie, uh, any help you can get is fantastic help. And you, you've got two guys, you know, Tom's raised over 25 million. They both made movies. You can't get much better help than that. For $97, I think it's an absolute steal. Uh, so www.argonet.com forward slash film finance guide is the link to go and get your copy. Tom, thank you very much. Jason, thank you for being here as well. I'll let you go back and sleep now. 
the great to talk festival. to you. Great to talk to you guys. <laughs> yeah, right. thanks, thanks very much. This is Tim Bennett from the Film Finance Channel for Argonet.com. Uh, we've had the pleasure of talking to Tom Malloy and Jason Brubaker today about their new program, the Film Finance Guide, argonet.com forward slash Film Finance Guide. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Thanks, Tom. And thanks, Jason.